Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be covering loveless bolts in their entirety. These fasteners were made popular by the legendary knife maker Mr. Bob Loveless. Not only do they have a distinct fisheye look, they also provide a solid mechanical connection for your handles, not unlike the Corby fastener. While having Corby bolts or loveless fasteners on your handle scales is not a necessity for a quality knife, there is no question in my mind that they increase the strength and durability of your handle construction. This is why I include at least one loveless or Corby fastener in every full tang knife that I produce. I'll start off with covering the similarities and differences between loveless fasteners and Corby fasteners. Both of these fasteners provide a strong mechanical connection for holding your handle scales onto the knife. In this regard, I consider them equal in strength. The largest point of contention between the two fasteners is generally in the realm of aesthetics. The Corby bolts, when finished, look just like normal straight pins. To an observer with no prior knowledge of the knife's construction, they will not be able to tell that the maker used a Corby fastener. On the other side, the loveless fasteners have a very distinct fisheye look. Even if the nut and the bolt are made of the same material, the observer will be able to see a definite separation of sorts between the nut and the bolt. While some knife makers and enthusiasts dislike this fisheye look, many love and even seek out knives with these loveless bolts. From the maker's perspective, there are some advantages of loveless bolts over Corby fasteners. I personally love Corby fasteners, however, they can be finicky. Depending on the width of your handle scales and blade material, the Corby fasteners may need to be adjusted in length so that they will work properly. For instance, if you're using a quarter inch handle scales with an eighth of an inch blade steel, you may need to shorten a new Corby fastener so that the head to head distance is around the quarter of an inch, assuming your counter bore is around 3 16 of an inch deep. With the loveless fasteners, this attention to detail and the length is a non-issue. They have a large width operating range that is solely dependent on the length of the bolt itself and practically will never be an issue for the knife maker. Another victory for the loveless bolts is that you do not need to worry about the dreaded void space as seen on Corby fasteners if you do not drill your counterbore deep enough. With proper Corby planning and installation, this is obviously not an issue, but for the new maker, this could just be another challenge to contend with. While most makers tend to purchase their loveless fasteners today, we will be making some loveless fasteners both with and without the lathe. If you do decide to purchase your loveless fasteners instead, I'll put some links in the description below so that you can find them online. I recently restored this 1937 Atlas lathe, and this is a perfect project to get my feet wet. The first step is to face off this piece of quarter inch bar stock and then drill a hole in the center of it. Here I'm using my center drill just to get my hole started, and then I will continue to drill this hole with a number 36 drill bit. This is the appropriate pilot hole to tap a 632 thread. We will be drilling this hole around one inch deep so that we can produce two loveless nuts with one drilling operation. Once we complete this number 36 hole, we will install a tap follower into the tailstock so that we can hold our tap nice and straight and also apply an even spring tension onto the end of the tap. This operation was fairly easy going considering that we're working with brass. If I was using stainless steel, I would imagine that this whole process would take a significantly longer period of time. However, with the brass, this was a pretty quick little project. Once we have about a quarter of an inch or a little over a quarter of an inch tapped, I decided to go ahead and use the cutoff tool and cut off one of these nuts uh, at a time. So we'll get one nut cut off, finish threading out the other nut, and then cut it off as well. So that's how you make nuts for your loveless fasteners on the lathe. The best thing about making it your own loveless fastener nuts is that you can make them out of whatever material you want, like copper or micarta, or maybe some other exotic materials that you can't purchase. Now we're going to go over how to make nuts for your loveless fasteners without the use of a lathe. I was able to find this piece of brass tubing from McMaster that has an internal diameter of 120 thousandths. Now this 120 thousandths is larger than the hole that would be produced by a number 36 bit. However, you're still able to cut threads into this piece with a 632 tap. These threads will be around half the depth of what they would have been if they were cut by the appropriate bit. 
The biggest concern for me with this thread depth is not the loss in strength, but the aesthetics of having a larger gap between the bolt and the nut. So you tell me on the final pictures of this video if you can see the difference between these two loveless fasteners, because I use both of these loveless fasteners on the knife at the end of this video. We're now going to cover the counter bore. Both loveless fasteners and Corby fasteners both require a counter bore tool so that the head of the fastener can sit into your handle scales. By doing some internet research, I was able to find this counter bore at McMaster Car that has interchangeable pilots. Now, this is really cool because a Corby fastener requires around a 3 16 of an inch pilot, while a loveless fastener requires a 140 thousandths pilot hole. The cool thing about having an interchangeable pilot on your counter bore is that you can use the same counter bore for both types of fasteners. Along with a 3 16 of an inch pilot I purchased for Corby fasteners, I also purchased a 5 30 seconds pilot that I am going to take 15 thousandths off of so it is the perfect size for a number 28 hole. My first thought was to turn this piece down on the lathe, however I was not able to get a rigid hold onto this pilot. So I was never able to actually remove any material with my cutter. So while it was on the lathe, I took a piece of sandpaper and about two hours of my time and slowly took off the OD of this pilot until it was a perfect fit with a number 28 hole. If you don't have a lathe for this operation, the same thing can easily be done in a drill press. So this is what the fit looks like after I remove 15 thousandths from the pilot. And you can see it has a nice smooth insertion into a number 28 hole. If you haven't been able to tell so far, I am a huge proponent of this counter bore from McMaster. I love that you can use multiple pilots with different fasteners. If you're only going to be using Corby fasteners, a good secondary option for a counter bore would be the counter bore from Pops Knife Supply. Alrighty, so the last portion of this video will be how to install these loveless fasteners onto your knife. With every knife handle scale installation, all the pieces need to be flat. So you can see that I was flattening these two handle scales on a piece of granite. I then clamped the two handle scales onto the knife so that the knife can be used as a drill guide. We will be drilling two number 28 holes for our loveless fasteners. Once the excess material is removed and the front of the handle scales are finished up, we head on over to the mini mill to drill our counter bores. I like using the mini mill for my counter bores because I can set a depth stop and drill the same depth counter bore on all four holes. In this case, I'm drilling my counter bores around 3 16 of an inch deep. Next, we are moving on to the glue up. The first step is to clean all of your components so that the epoxy has a nice clean surface to adhere to. This includes the inside of the counter bores that you just drilled. I put a little bit of epoxy on the head of the loveless bolt so that I have epoxy in the threads between the bolt and the nut. I also put a little bit of epoxy inside of the counter bore before inserting the loveless fastener. I get both loveless fasteners installed on one handle scale and then I apply epoxy onto the inside of that handle scale. Once we have the epoxy applied to the inside of the scale, we'll set it aside and start working on the other handle scale. In this case, I went ahead and put some epoxy on the flat inside portion of the other handle scale first, and then put the epoxy into the counter bores on the other side. Next, we insert the remaining two loveless nuts into these two counter bores on the right handle scale. After the nuts are installed in all four locations, we'll put a little bit of epoxy onto the knife tang itself and then start screwing together the handle. I like using the drill here, however, you must be very careful so that you do not over torque, over tighten, or break or twist anything on your handle. I normally get it very close with the drill and then I will finish up the tightening with hand tools. This installation method for loveless fasteners has worked great for me in the past. However, if you have a simpler, easier standard operating procedure for installing your loveless fasteners, please feel free to outline it in the comments below so that not only will I learn, but also the other followers of this channel will be able to learn as well. Once we have the loveless fasteners gently snugged up, but not so snug to force all the epoxy out of our joint, we will then clean off the front of the handle scales and allow 24 hours for the epoxy to cure. 
I do plan on producing an entire video on the building of this bird and trout knife along with making a leather sheath for it. However, I wanted to show you guys how the loveless fasteners we made in this video turned out on a knife. Overall, I'm extremely happy with these DIY fasteners. I don't see any difference between these and the ones that I bought in the past. And I think that I'll continue to make these DIY loveless fasteners in the future. So if you were on the fence about using loveless fasteners, I hope that this video sheds some light on the topic so that you have no fear with using these fasteners on your knives moving forward. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. If you're looking for another way to help the channel out, we recently opened a Patreon account and would love to have you on as a patron. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.